All right, you just, you just stay there. Let me introduce you to Anthony. Uh, Anthony, say hello to Elaine. Elaine, say hello to Anthony. Hello, Elaine. Uh, Anthony, yeah, hello. you think he should have lost his job? Hello, Ian. Yeah. Why? Hello to you as well. T tell us, hello, you. Tell us why you think yeah. he should have lost his job, Anthony. Well, to be honest with you, now I won't make any specific um, allegations, but I've always noted Alistair Stewart as a, just a little bit smug and arrogant on an air to certain presenters. This is some while ago. It's just his style. I don't think he means to be. I think he's just... No, but it comes across a little bit kind of arrogant at times. He's a very good presenter. Mm -hmm. Good. And perhaps that goes with you. You know, you have actors, great actors who are divas backstage. Well, I think he comes from sort of slightly old school. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying yeah. that. But, um, yeah, he's, a, it's a, just a, he's a really lovely man. I've never heard him say anything bad about anyone, really. No, but uh, the climate we live in now, it makes it almost impossible to survive, really, almost, <laughs> doesn't it, with Twitter. You have the strange... Oh, you know, my goodness, don't, st don't start me off. But why do you think he should have lost his job in this instance? Do you think he would? He think he was deliberately racially insulting this guy? Perhaps not, but you have to be so careful now. You have to read literally every... You know, what you're reading on auto queue, you have to read that very carefully. Yeah. And so what you're twittering, you've got to sort of... Uh, I don't know if they have a kind of... Uh, cancel button on it so you can delete the tweet but you've got to almost give it to an editor this is the problem i think you're leading a sort of twin track life mm. on air you're a respectable presenter then you're leading kind of private life like trump tweeting away mm. you know as i said before i think the reason why he did lose his job was because for this and all the other reasons if there are other reasons but if they yeah. kept him on and it had emerged then itv would be in the spotlight and they would have to justify why they didn't sack him and like most mm. management they just thought oh i can't be doing with this we have to sort it anyway elaine why should he not have lost his job i think it goes back to a, a line in a song a lie is not the truth unless you believe it and that seems to be happening a lot in our world at the present if he was quoting shakespeare what are we going to do? Get rid of all the classic works because people don't like it? No, it wasn't. I think, I, no, I've heard that argument. I think the argument mm. against that is more he did know what he was saying, but he's hiding behind the cover uh, well, of Shakespeare well, because he's well, done it before. Anyone, unless anyone even can sit in that person's mind and know it, we're never going to know that, are we? No, we're not. And this, and this happened in the 80s. I remember sitting in a group of people, um, actually in a counselling session, and somebody, I, we, we, we were talking about how things affect people. Mm. And I said the word, we don't want any um, characterisations or characters character assassinations and somebody stood up and said I don't like the word and that's what we're getting it's not the word it's what it actually does right and people are taking things out of context so do you think Elaine and this is I think the more interesting part of this conversation although I do feel very sad for Alistair is do you think we are now seeing racism where it doesn't exist or is it that people who aren't black can't see it so what's the point i think we're living in a society and always have and where we love to put people in boxes fat thin tall ginger not ginger black white whatever you like mm -hmm. it's people love to categorize people in boxes because that's the way i'm afraid our brain works right. i could say to you ian don't think of an elephant and the first thing I know you're going to think of is an elephant because our brain works on identification first and then we say, oh, for God's sake, can't say that, can't no, say I'm that. Sorry. Come in, Anthony. Yes. Can I just say about where this kind of started almost in this very sensitive age we live in, which started in fact pre-social media with reality TV. Mm. Uh, you remember Jay Goody? I do. Mm. Michelle Pachetti. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This kind of bringing this to the fore started almost with her, but probably before then. She was yeah. being racist in that that exchange. She was deliberately doing it to, to, yeah. to get to I know. Was That's right. So that's an extreme example. Yeah. But I would mention something else, and I'm not going to say the incident because, you know, it's quite controversial. Andrew Neal, who can be quite sharp as well, yeah. is well known for that, made a rather unfortunate comment to Diane Abbott some years ago on his program this week. Did he? You know, he does those kind of humorous, in inverted commas, introductions. Yeah. He calls people other silly names. No, 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 never do again. I, I suppose what, suppose the thing that um, concerns me more than anything else is that when we have these hysterical debates, if someone loses their job and it's, a, you know, big screaming headlines, no one really wants to talk about it. ITV won't go public, Alistair won't go public, no one wants to talk about it, they're afraid. What we do is we kind of... We, we, we close off the subject a bit and we don't mm. really 
get into it because people like me are going, oh, if I say that, does that mean I might lose my job? And this sometimes is ridiculous. we just need a bit more consideration when we look at the subject, I think. I, I, think, I think it's getting rather silly. I think we all have to stand up in the world and realise that people are going to be calling names and people are going to be calling names from the day that we're in the, in the, from the cradle when we go to school to the time that we're adult. Mm. As long as they're not throwing the stones that they go with it, that's part of life. Mm. And I think yeah. people pe people losing their jobs yeah. over something that is private, what are we going to do? Stop people having that dialogue. I think what we're going to do is advise broadcasters not to go on Twitter. That would well, be my advice. But anyway, any, yeah. they're always trying to get me to do more and more, and I just don't like it because I'll just, no, I know yeah. I'll get annoyed with someone and just say something stupid, or I'll do it when I've had a Sorry. drink or something. Go on, Anthony. Let's just touch in one final time. Yeah, of course. Uh, and again, this is before Twitter. This was Carol Thatcher, mm. who made a rather unfortunate comment on the one show or backstage at the one show, yes. which I'm not going to repeat. No, no, we all remember it. Yeah, yeah. And of course, her career was over. That was before Twitter. Mm. Yeah, I no, think that's true. That's true. It is. It, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot about it. And it there's, there's a lot of, you know, what is it? Is being racist worse than? Um, no, I was listening. Oh, well, I'll try to remember. I, but I'm not going to try and just remember it when it, on the hoof. But Gail Porter, that was it. Remember Gail Porter, the Scottish model, and her picture was beamed up naked on on Big Ben once. Mm -hmm. It was in think it was HM or, or HFM or, or or it was GQ or something. And on but on the Buzzcocks, um, Mark Lamar made some joke and said, "I think we've seen enough of you today, haven't we?" Blah blah blah. And it psychologically really really damaged her. And I was just wondering, you know, sometimes we try and be funny and we make jokes. And all the rest of it and, and, and I'm just wondering whether we get into the stage now where is one worse than the other or I mean do you think Anthony any good will come out of all these hysterical stories or not <laughs> yes perhaps some people will just come off Twitter uh, might be a good thing for a lot of people yeah, you know, right. been a very a very old example yeah. and this goes back oh, I think maybe to the 70s it was Fanny Craddock God. I don't suppose anyone can really remember. I think we can, but where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this probably crops up on those kind of compilation shows. And she made a big gaffe. She, it was a program where, kind of ahead of its time, where members of the public were invited to kind of become an apprentice to Fanny Craddock, who was a TV cook. Yeah. And was rather eccentric. Yeah. And she humiliated this woman on the program. And her career was at first over. Was it? I know. Well, yeah. you know, maybe... <sighs> Alistair's not the first and he won't be the last. A lot of you making the point, whether he meant it or not, he's an experienced journalist, he goes on Twitter and he uses phrases like that whilst talking to a black man. What do you expect? And I, and I, I completely understand that. Maybe it should have been better, but as I say, it's just... Oh, it's just a, it's a, it's shark infested waters. Stay away sometimes. You're listening to uh, LBC. This is Ian Payne in for Tom Swarbrick in half an hour. It'll be Brexit day. Oh yes, excited? We've got a fun packed filled program from midnight right through till 11 o'clock, yeah? Lots of things, lots of big guests coming up tomorrow. Um, that's in half an hour. Anyway, happy Brexit Eve at half 11. Here's Serena Farrow. UK health officials have increased the coronavirus risk level from low to moderate, but insist they don't think there's a bigger threat to individuals. Well, earlier tonight, the World Health Organization declared an international public health emergency. 170 people have now died in China. US Secretary of State is confident that most details of a UK 